What do you choose to challenge? We have roving mics. Martha, it's okay. I know you are loud like me. Where? In any space. Yes, while you are challenging equal opportunities, I want you to be specific on which space. So you run a battle. You know you choose a battle. Yeah. The war is huge. You choose a battle. I, I, I chose to, to have a space on political aspects. Political aspects. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'll, I'd love one day to be an MCA in yes. my ward. Yes, and South you, ward. you know you can be next year. Yeah, I, I know I can be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Anyango, Polycom, Powerhouse, what do you choose to challenge? I know you've challenged many things over the years, but I want you to choose one. What are you choosing to challenge? I, I choose to challenge women who bring other women down. down. That's big. And I, I, I'm, 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 I'm very, very serious about this. Yeah. I'm not just talking about a fellow woman, the woman next to me who yeah. brings me down. Mm. I'm talking about the women rights organizations. That even bring other women's yes, rights organizations. Yes, they've created a lot of hierarchies that they don't listen to other women in other spaces. Thank you. At the end of the day, we are not able to unite women yeah. because they look at wale ni wa mashinani, wale ni wa uko, wale yeah. ni wa uko. Yeah. Yeah, so we are not united. Thank so you. So women, let's stop bringing other people down. Thank you. I get it. What do you choose to challenge, Marcy? You are sitting next to the camera. What do you choose to, ch to challenge? Good morning. Good morning. I morning. choose to challenge all forms of violence against women, be it political violence, be it uh, other forms of violence such as gender-based violence, domestic violence, because all these things are what Meshmiwa was saying are barriers to even lead uh, women leading. Yeah. Yes. So Thank today you. I choose to. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Marcy. Right at the back there, Halima of Femnet, what do you choose to challenge? What do you choose to challenge, Halima? I choose to challenge inequality, yeah. inequality in women's sexual reproductive health and rights, right. and bodily autonomy and integrity. Very good. Thank you, thank you. May I pick a woman whose name I don't know but I love? Yes. My sister, sitting at the back. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. What do you choose to challenge? Lucian. I love you. I've seen you. Uh, my name is Wendy Aura. I yes, Wendy. Welcome. Yeah, um, I'm so humbled to be here. So I choose to challenge uh, the fear in young women for pursuing politics. The fear. Let me explain a bit. Mm -hmm. Today, I'll get, I'll talk to a mentor. She'll after that conversation, I get so confident about Alvai. Mm. And actually, I now know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. The next day, I talk to another person, consulting, and then you are now confused. You are mm. back to zero. Mm. Uh, I was talking to a friend, a young woman like myself, and I actually work with young women in politics. We have a program with them, Young Women Leaders Connect. So uh, by December, when we're going for Christmas, a number of us we are very sure they are going to vie. Right now, if you ask them, some of them will be like, I'm back to square zero. Mm. The way you are being told, this is the reality, qua ground, you will waste a lot of time uh, like doing the, the work, like engaging the community and all that, but the, uh, the system already knows the people will get there. Yeah. But, so people, you, you, start be, you start feeling intimidated, yeah. and then you still, you feel like, who is now telling the truth? This person yeah. is telling me I don't need to uh, to waste my time on the ground. This person is telling me work on the ground because we don't have money. So there's a lot of, you don't know who is telling the truth. In okay. politics, uh, in parties, political parties, someone will tell you this is the right party to work with because it is the ground party. Another one will tell you, look, go and look for, uh, just find a very unique party and position yourself. So right. it is a lot of fear and you don't know so what's you happening. want to challenge that fear in young yeah. women? Yeah, so Thank I just you. want to challenge that and tell Thank young you. women, whatever your heart tells you, go for it. Thank you, Wendy. You Thank you. Please pass over the mic to the gentleman in front of you in a white shirt. Sir, you've been with us from the beginning. We thank you. We thank all the men who collaborate with us. When you look at it in retrospect, what do you choose to challenge? Uh, I choose to challenge all forms of 
physical violence, especially during political times. All forms of physical violence against women. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Can we have one more person that said, Eric, what do you choose to challenge, Eric? I choose to challenge the idea that men cannot be naturals because mm. it's a very important piece in this conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Somebody here wants the mic. The lady in a black and white polka dot. I know. <laughs> I'll just say, and internalized misogyny. Because wow. that's where it starts from. Internalized also, misogyny. Yeah. And now me, body. I didn't go to Harvard. They give me another nini. You, you see why there are talked about those schools that are used as polling stations and schools that are groups of schools. Actually, so now explain to me. I love the point. It's extremely powerful. Unpack it. For me, the first point of misogyny or patriarchy is body autonomy for women. Yeah. Like, if you didn't know, the word fallopian tube was invented by a man. Mm. But there's a woman who's telling me today we can call a fallopian tube mm. a uterus trumpet. Mm -hmm. You see, it holds. You see, little. women are, are setting up their own institutions. You need training on understanding that. Yeah. So for me, the first point of misogyny and patriarchy that is making me not have economic, economic empowerment, political empowerment, financial—I don't know what—all those things that lady was talking about that you have to, to ask my father permission to buy. He never asks me. They even ask me what contraception I use. Why did I use it? Why did it fail? How many abortions I had? Mm. Why don't I have full breasts? Why mm. don't I have an ass? Everyone has an ass. Mm. You can't say manamke hana matako na nakuja kusimbele yako. Kwani anakalia mikono. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now because of time, I know there are many of us who want to speak about what they choose to. Is there anybody with a burning what I choose to challenge? There. Yes. Okay, one and Hamid. Yes, yes, my sister. Uh-huh. Okay, um, my name is Becky. I come from Kisumu. Um, I choose to challenge inequality and unequal pay and poor media coverage for women, young women and women in Kenyan sports. Mm. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. You know it's all intertwined. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister. What do you choose to challenge? Thank you so much. I underpin with everyone who actually choose to challenge GBV. Mm. But I choose to challenge degradation of environment and I, mm. I choose to challenge the link between politics and environment at all levels. Wow. Thank you. A big clap to all of us. All of us. And as we clap, can we listen very briefly for five minutes to young women talking to us now? Very briefly, I'm told four or five minutes. On the screen are teenage girls with a message. Day to celebrate and commemorate International Women's Day. Nasha. Hi, my name is Nasterian Saruni. I'm the project lead for Backup Dada. We, in partnership with Feminet, are here today to celebrate and commemorate International Women's Day by having a girls chat with the girls we have been engaging with in our project. My name is Stella. I choose to stand up for girls to have a say in everywhere they are, not to leave men to be the say over them. My name is Faith Achien. I choose to challenge women's rights so that they should not be harassed by men. My name is Dolphin. I choose to challenge girl child to take more responsibility in the society. My name is Sarah. I choose to challenge school dropout. My name is Diana Njoki, one of the facilitators of, the, of today's event as we celebrate International Women's Day. Um, we decided to have a session with the girls to talk to them about leadership and especially women in leadership to find out their views on what they think leadership is and how it impacts them as women and as young girls. Um, throughout the day we've had uh, interactive sessions with them. They've given us uh, important uh, standpoints on what leadership is and what equality means to them. 
So we've had sessions of them telling us about the challenges that they face in leadership, both at home and at school, and generally in the society, and what they wish to accomplish later on in life. My name I'm called Bintnai Shamim. I'm from Eagles Legas High School. I from three students. This session has been a very interesting one. We have practiced many things and today I have learned about how to defend myself, how to stand up for myself, how to interact with others. The goal of this session was to be able to show these girls that being a leader is important and for them to broaden their minds on what they wish to accomplish in the future. It is also important for them to go with the theme of the year, which is I choose to challenge, and every single one of them has decided or has put it in the open what they want to challenge in the society when it comes to gender and inequality, when it comes to leadership especially. So yes, we're very thankful. I have learned that I can also take a big position like a lady. I'm Vivian Amondi. Um, a teacher at Legos, uh, uh, Eagles Legacy and I've been having a great impact with the girls through this session of Backup Dada. They are really learning a lot, they are empowered and the session of today was special. I appreciate the team. It was more of leadership skills and uh, the girls have learned that through through the activities that they are taught, they can take up any position in leadership and also how to defend themselves from GBV. They are now able to take up leadership positions. Today I chose to challenge the role of the role of women in the society. We are glad these girls are able to come here bond together and just uh, understand why and it is important for them to take up these leadership roles even from a young age. So this is our way of nurturing this in the next generations and we hope that as they pass on they can also pass on the message to the younger girls and together we can form a community of sisterhood that are taking charge taking space and taking up the leadership roles thanks my name is Arunduhu Anjiru. I convene for Kocho Peace and Justice Center I choose to challenge gender inequality I choose to challenge Wow. It's wonderful to always look at young women with the vision that we know ought to be taken forward. Isn't that refreshing? With a big uh, thanks to Femnet again and to Nyawera who leads the Young Women's jo Docket. Can we see you, Nyawera? <clears throat> Thank you very much. Beloved, would you believe we've been here for like, is it like four hours? Class, isn't it? Jane Anyango is hungry, there's a pen in her mouth. So I will release her off her stress shortly. And I want to drop the mic and step out. But before that, please allow me to acknowledge and thank and celebrate a very special person in the room today. Madam Vivian Araka, please could you stand that we clap for her and I will tell you now. Allow me to introduce my sister, Vivian Anaka, who is a teacher, an educationist, who without her, you know how it is, I would not have come out. You're, you're getting. So you know you have no choice but to acknowledge. Please thank, I want to thank my sister publicly today. I want to thank quite a number of sisters in the house you can sit, madam. Madam is a teacher, so I call her madam. You know you don't forget. <laughs> thank you, madam. I want to thank so many of you, some known to me, some unknown to me. Yesterday, I sent a note of gratitude to strangers who have loved me and continue loving me. So what I choose to challenge today, and through and through for a while, I choose to challenge breast cancer. I choose to fight breast cancer. So I want to tell you a beautiful, wonderful love story that is really joyous, that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I stand here today 
this is my second week after surgery, second week, starting week three after surgery. And the reason why the powerful Femnet put this for me to wear, to say, hi, I love you, but please don't hug me, is because this side is still bandaged. So I know <laughs> that quite, quite a number, but I wanted to hug. Karo, do you know how much I want to hug you? But I wanted to hug. So the point that I want to speak today, and I want to speak it openly to the women, my sisters, my daughters, my mothers, is that point number one, all of us are at risk of breast cancer. You know why we are all high risk? My sisters, why are we all high risk? Why are we all high risk? Why are we all high risk? So my doctor, who's the best doctor you can ever have, have sent me yesterday and told me as a, my mouthpiece, please be clear on how you articulate. I said, okay, Dr. Otieno, I will articulate. We are all high risk just by the simple fact that we are female. Because people speak about it like it is detached. We are all high risk by the simple fact that we are female. On another day, in a platform that Feminet, I am sure, will give me, we will go through the processes. But there are things I want to implant on you today, on International Women's Day. Ladies, do your breast check. We in the media normally draw pictures for you and tell you, lift your hand, press there, check there, press inside. Some of us do it without paying attention. My doctor tells me at least to do one critical breast check every month. One. And so I asked him, what do you mean one? He said, that one, that day you take 20 minutes. I'm not only talking to the ladies, to the men in the room who are our brothers, our husbands, our sons. You have women in your life. How do you check? You have to check properly and see. But breast cancer is a very funny demon. Sometimes it manifests, sometimes it doesn't, okay? But it is in there. But also the news I want to bring to you women, my sisters, don't fear. I'm on week three after surgery. It, Madam, is it week three we are starting? Okay. You see, I work with calendars, I work with hands to squeeze, I work with KDF. My life is complete. Don't fear. One of the things that I hear or what, my, what I've discovered in the last two months which Daisy, I wanted to say in your presence, that breast cancer in the country is the number one cancer killer. Is the government making it a priority? No. Why? Because it's women. When we look at ourselves as women, we should know that the platform where we step is a platform where it is constantly fighting. Why do I say I have confirmed that? I had surgery in a very small institution of about 20 Kenyatta's, Nairobi Hospital, Mpisha. See, those are big. And these are not district hospitals where our women go. So what numbers are we talking about? So as a journalist, I, I approach them and ask them, ah, ah, but how many mastectomies do you do? And they told me, Mildred, sometimes in a week, we do even eight. Dr. Njoroge, do you believe? That's a small, I've told you, it's a small hospital with like 20 beds. It's not a big hospital. It's not a district hospital. So the point that I'm trying to bring out is that our women, we women, are suffering. That the number one cancer killer in the country is breast cancer. That it is not a priority. But what I also want to tell you, it can be managed. Do I look to you like a morning? Actually, I'm standing like this because I'm kind of pressed. You know, I've stood here for like four months, four, four hours. During after this, I run. So, the point that I want us, the stigma I want us to break, Lucian, is the fear of our women not to say, I got this thing. What is the stigma that we keep it off? I got sick, I announced it. One, because I needed support. It's an expensive disease. I need to raise funds. And I said it as it is. Two, because every day I realize it is such a stigma because women are calling me whispering. Guy Mildred, do you know even me last year? Guy Mildred, do you know why? Cancer, talking about cervical. Oh, by the way, after, after breast cancer, the second one is cervical. All that is we? 
women. And he said, the stigma. And he gave us a very heartbreaking story of a woman who traveled all the way from Uganda for a whole year. Doctors are treating everything else. Headache, backache, toothache, what, chest, what. Nobody's touching the breast. When she came to Nairobi, it was a bit too late. But when she was talking to, the doctor, to my doctor, she said, you know, I've not told anybody there, but there's something in my breast. That was the problem for a whole year. But you see what delay does to cancer, that when you delay, it mutates. And as they're having discussion, she says, first of all, the doctors didn't ask, but we talked about our social st stereotypes and stigmas that women, you, you're not supposed to say you have breasts. So <laughs> we are leaders and forward-moving women. I urge and I plead that on this day, on International Women's Day, our breasts are nothing to be ashamed of. Our cervix, nothing to be ashamed of. That if we are able to find a space to actually talk about breast cancer, we will talk about breast cancer. It's my first outing in two months. It's the first time I was telling memory I'm wearing heels and applying lipstick in two months. But if we keep quiet as women leaders, others are suffering. It's okay. You will touch your breast, you feel a lump. The doctor says it's not a diagnosis. A lump does not necessarily translate to cancer. It can be anything. But if you feel a lump, run. Get it checked. Just get it checked. But another thing we say, get it checked. This thing can be managed. I stand in confidence because of the people who've loved me and continue to love me. By force, by the way. There are others who love me by force. Even when I'm hiding in my house, they come by force. Even when I say I'm not talking to anybody, they come and sit there quietly and listen to me sleep. I've had people, my, Madam comes to sit at the corner to listen to me sleep. He said, yeah, I was just sitting there for an hour. I was listening to you sleep. That's the kind of love. That's why I asked from the start, who's squeezing your hand when you can't squeeze it yourself and you're in pain and you're in whatever. I am on a mission to talk about this thing. It's attacking women. I am also on a mission to look for who I call my, my one-breasted sisters. It's not a shaming for a woman to not have I have one. There are those who don't have one. They don't have both. And that's okay. I am a bit careful because I'm in pain and I'm still plastered. I want to urge women that it's not our fault you were born a woman. It's not a mistake that you have breasts. It's not, not, absolutely not your fault if you're in a situation of breast cancer. Why are we not talking about it? Let's talk about it. Let's go for those tests. I want to drop the mic by once again appreciating Femnet. <laughs> So I am, I am an ex feminist. I'm told not to say ex. They will attack me with everything. So I am a feminist member, proud feminist staff. Whether they like it or not, I'm not on their payroll though. But because feminist love women, I love women. And feminist, like I said at the beginning, they keep, you know, there are people who call you and say, hi. Hey, yeah, we know you're sick. Yeah, it's okay. We know you're sick, but you have to do this work because life has to go on. I love them. I absolutely love them. W what I fear, Winnie, is the warrior stories. You know you have no time for warrior. Life is going on. My sisters, life goes on. You worry, of course there's worry. Oh, my children, yes, there's, there's worry. But Jane, the challenge I have gotten in the last two months, because I'm, I'm a believer, I know God. God is wondering, eh, hey, hey. So you mean you can believe in me and still worry? You know you can't do both. Maria, you know you can't do both? You choose one. You choose to worry or you choose to believe God. I want to thank God so much for the privilege to be on this journey. I see it as a privilege. I want to thank God. I see it as a privilege of power. There are times that your creator makes you tiptoe around him. 
because it's a privilege. But most importantly, I want to thank all the sisters, all the people, visible and invisible. I've had people support me that I've never met in my life. And they are still supporting me. I want to appreciate that. But I want to sit down by saying, we are going to win this. The beast must fall. So I look forward. The journey is difficult, very difficult. But I have hands to squeeze. You finish surgery, you move to the next, to the next, and the next are the bad ones. I have hands to squeeze. That if I call you out of the blues and tell you, so you just come and sit with me at the hospital for one, two, three hours for chemo, and we'll go home, you will do it. But I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for other women around us who are suffering alone in silence. There are many women who can't voice it the way I voice it. There are many women who can't access medical for, oh my God, it's heartbreaking. I didn't know how bad until I jumped into it. I didn't know how bad. Look around for each other. Look around for yourself. But first of all, do those tech checks. And don't fear. And if you want references, call me. Tell me at Mildred, which is your doctor? How do I do this? Call me. I, I am I'm, I'm absolutely sure this thing is manageable. Do you know how I know? I'm surrounded by over 10 now women. Survivors. Survive. The champs, Marcelin, champ. Please, this is a champ that you've never, there's so many champs here. We have champs. So in leadership, we will try as much as possible to shield our women, not to sink with this thing. Remember I've said, the two number one, two killers of cancers in, in Kenya are all women, breast and cervical, and they're still dancing. Why is there? When they dance BBI tune, can you throw in breast cancer in the BBI tune? That women are dying in these hospitals and they're not prioritizing. You see? So this is my battle. I thank you for the honor of standing before you and for you listening to me. I love you. I love you. <laughs> thank you. I thank you so much. I appreciate today that this is the first day that I'm really stepping out after a, a sense of darkness. It was brief. It was brief. But then I appreciate that I'm in this space. Halima, I do. I am fine, Halima. Please do not worry. I am fine. Eric, true story. I'm fine. I am. I, Eric doesn't believe me. But I'm fine. I want to urge that we find the cause and the purpose of why we live as women. And when you find it, go for it because that is what I'm doing. I love you all, and God bless you all. God bless you all. I now welcome Rachel Kagoya, Dr. Professor, Professor Rachel Kagoya of Femnet. I want to hand over the mic. Please dance to Professor Rachel Kagoya of Femnet to give a vote of thanks. Um, she's Dr. Professor Rachel Kagoya. If you could give the band a few minutes, Rachel, so I can be hugging you while, while they're singing. My people, my people, open your eyes and dance all the call of the drum. Friendly more, friendly more, some more on the share. Home of the brave, our nation will soon be as one. Friendly more, friendly more. Some more on my shell, some more on my shell. Has Aluta continua, aluta continua, continua. And in 
Oh, please stand, stand. Aluta continua, aluta continua, continua. Continua, continua. Continua. A luta continua. The struggle continues. Yes. Wow, wow. That has been a couple of very, very powerful four hours, great conversations. Are we all feeling inspired? Have we been feeling the vibes of the powerful conversations? It has been real. It has been great. And we look forward to another session like this one. A moment when we come together as sisters and the few brothers, where we come together and not just celebrate, because celebration is important. We are saying it is International Women's Day, we need to celebrate. But it's also a moment to demand, to call out, to speak as it is, to hold accountable our leaders and everybody else who is making decisions on our behalf, because we are saying we want to be the ones making that decision. So we are grateful. I just want to take a few minutes, really, to acknowledge each one of us, to really say thank you for gracing this occasion, but not just gracing, being also very active. Not only just active in listening, but also contributing to the conversation. So really, really thanking each one of us. And because I know we have the clappers, can we just clap to ourselves? Allow me, allow me also to really deeply appreciate my sister Mildred. Thank you, Mildred. Not only for moderating this session powerfully and beautifully, but also sharing with us your love, your passion. It oozes from you, and we tap into it. Thank you, Mildred. You're a joy. <laughs> and, and, and yes, a luta continua, a luta continua. I love you also to appreciate memory and Dorothy for great leadership. Because friends, you will agree with me, by the time you pull together this, a lot of background work has worked, right? And so thanking memory deeply. Thank you, memory. Thank you, Dorothy, for the sleepless night, Dorothy, for the late calls <laughs> and everything that has taken for us to be here in the last couple of hours. But I also recognize there's a whole team there's a whole team at FemNet. Helen, thank you. Kerubo, are you around? Lillian, I see you there. Rose, and many, many of the FemNet, feminine ninjas at FemNet, really to say thank you. Allow me also to recognize a team of what we call the communications team, the communications feminine ninjas. And I'll tell you who are these communication feminine ninjas. We have Maria who has been recording and taking notes of everything that has been conversed in the last couple of hours. Thank you, Maria Powerson. We have Eriko <laughs> and a team that have been really vibrant on digital and taking our conversations outside these walls so that we are also having conversations in the digital platforms and outside there. Thank you, thank you to the digital team. Kerubo! <laughs> our digital media specialist 
who has been coordinating that. Of course, of course, there are other fellows who are just walking with things holding here. Can you see them? Yeah. The videographers. Yeah. Yes, Billy and the team really deeply appreciated each one of you. And then friends, allow me now to appreciate deeply our speakers, the panelists, who not only shared with us their journeys, they not only shared with us their journeys, but also their convictions, but also the things they are celebrating and challenging even on this International Women's Day. Helen, you started us off at those numbers you saw, they were all below 30%. We know Beijing Declaration already started talking about 30%, right? And then we started becoming ambitious and we went to 50%. But how are we doing in Kenya? Did you see a 30 somewhere? I didn't see a 30. They were all below 30. So in, in, because I'm also a teacher, we say that when you're performing below. That is below performance. Actually, you can even start by saying you're not performing, you know? <laughs> this is where the teacher writes there, eh? You're not performing at all. So we're really doing badly. But it also gives us hope, and I think that's what Helen really underscored and say. Then it means for us to keep rising, speaking up, and speaking out to make sure we start seeing those numbers move. We don't want to wait for 10 years. 10 years is too long a time. But we have the moment right now. Yes, I can hear you agreed. It's such a long time. So thank you for jogging our minds with the data. Thank you, Daisy, for passionately sharing with us your journey, <laughs> because I would say that is your life, that is your journey. Every time we hear Daisy speaking truth to power, and, and I know at one point you said you, you are thinking you're deviating from the discussion. No, that was the center of the discussion, and thank you for speaking that truth. And we want to have more Daisies continuing to speak this truth to power. Because we are tired. Are you, are you feeling tired? You know, we grew up seeing these challenging, these systems that should change women. And we are still now growing and going soon going to be old and we are still having this. We are tired. So the more reason we need more of us to keep being bold and to challenge the systems that are not working, although they pretend to look like they are working for women. Women are leading. I love that. Women must lead, but women are leading. Yes, women are leading because we are the women. Waidara, thank you very much for honoring us and reminding us and taking us through what does it really take, you know, to be a woman leader and a young woman leader in this country and taking us through what it is that you have really walked that journey and talked that journey. Thank you so much. And we wish you all the best even in the journeys and the days ahead. <laughs> Hamisa, Hamisa Zaja. Don't Itachi has stepped out briefly, but thank you. Thank you so much, even for, for, for challenging us and sharing with us firsthand what you have gone through and what is your inspiration, even now as we look forward to the next coming elections. Caroline Agwanda, thank you too. And for reminding us that we need to think about being economically empowered, yes. And thank you also, Honor, um, Honorable Senator Rose Nyamunga. Um, you know, when you're speaking, it reminded me of something we keep challenging ourselves at Feminine. You know, we love, we say words shape our world. Yes. And we say mentoring. But can we start thinking of fem femtoring? Because <laughs> mentoring, <laughs> guys, mentoring comes, it's, it, 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 it carries with it all the patriarchy so that, you know, it comes with this, with this cute relationship that still has a patriarchal notion. So that it is now me, Rachel, here, who is so old, and so I get a young one, so I'm mentoring you, and I'm just passing patriarchy on you. I'm taking away your agency. I'm making you look like you don't know anything. It is me who is experienced. Can we start fermentering, fermentorship, fermenters, fermentees? So we thank you, Rosa Gwanda, for fermentering. Caroline Agwanda, yes. and we are grateful. Thank you, Juliet Moremi. Women must lead, yes. and there's nothing to negotiate. I love the way you said, nothing to negotiate. Women must lead, and they are leading. And also for making a commitment, which we are going to hold you accountable, because you know now you're on that side, we hold you accountable. Did you hear her say that they're ensuring that there will be equitable representation and participation of women in all political parties? 
We will hold you accountable. But we are also here to support you to make that to be a reality. And you can count on us. So thank you, Juliet. And allow me, Juliet, because today we are choosing to challenge, isn't it? Can we just challenge one thing, one notion? The only thing, there's a study that was done by Akina Mama wa Africa. And the only thing that a man can't do is give birth. Everything else they can do. They can wash a baby. They can cook. They can do everything else, including serving in those hotels. And they can serve even in those hotels really well. So we need to keep challenging and demystifying the gender roles because we have learned those gender roles. So we need to keep unlearning those gender roles. So in every situation, in every presentation that we are, is to say what you can do, we can do. Just make sure that you're also paying us well when we are doing our role. Let's keep demanding for equal pay, for equal work. Marceline, my sister, thank you. Thank you for challenging us and reminding us we need to be visible. We do not want only to be seen, we want to be seen and heard. To the, the role of women to be visible in the media. And the media, remember, we are talking about mainstream and also social media. So let's also be visible yeah. in all media. The visible ones and the ones that are not in all the media. And we must be, remain vigilant. Of course, allow me to appreciate the, the band, the powerful band, the yeah. Feminine Jazz. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Feminine Ninja. You rock. You rock. The Femininja Band, thank you very much. The technical team, thank you for support. And of course, the team here at Signature. And if in case there's anyone who may feel I haven't, let me just add this. Thank you, everyone. I, uh, we deeply appreciate. I think we want to bring our meeting to a close. Or oh, do you want to come? Okay, okay. I'm told to invite you, Dorothy. And then the band can come in. But then also to urge us, our leaders are here. And remember, we started by saying we are all leaders. So let's also take moments of photos and, and conversations, even as we continue into the next session. Thank you very much. Hey, it's been a wonderful day. Thank you so much for coming. I've had sleepless nights, but I'm so happy that it has turned out to be very successful. Thank you so much for making it a success. It's usually very hard speaking after Mildred and after Kagoya, but I want to tell you that I've been fermented. Ferme? Fermented. Fermented. This position that I'm holding now was being held by Mildred before she left. So you can imagine fitting into her shoes. You also have to dechocha, and I do it very well. And thank you so much because this position has connected me to these great ladies. I've interacted with them and they're now my friends. Uh, when I was looking for a speaker and everyone was busy because today is a very important day. Everybody was going back to Mashinani to reconnect with their constituents. I called Honarebo and she's like, Ata una ibu, nitakuja, lakini auna ibu. You know, that is the level we've gone because she can hold my back and she will come even at last minute. Thank you so much, Moshimiwa. Thank you so much. I don't want to speak more. It's been a successful day and my heart is at peace. Thank you so much for each and everyone making it a success. You've made it big for me. Uh, I just want to say, even as we end, we had very beautiful t-shirts in your bag that will really, we've talked about visibility. It is important that we also take some pictures with those very beautiful t-shirts and the bags. So our media team will be there. Feel free if you're engaged so that they can take very good pictures that you can also use to challenge other people outside, okay? So use those t-shirts to challenge, to pass on the message. Um, lastly, I want to talk about uh, our lunch. We will do them in two sections because of social distancing. So the first um, group will go, we will have the first 50 uh, go, and then we can wait for another 30 minutes and then go. Please bear with us because uh, th those are the rules uh, set by the hotel. Um, Besides that, so our, our, our lunch, we're going to take it at Western, Best Western Plus Hotel, the building next door. So once you get to the lift, you come out the next building. You just enter the next building on the ground floor. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I would have wished for you to go with my clappers, but then because I want another session also to be that fiery, I would... <laughs> <laughs> Intervene for us. <laughs> I go with the clappers. 
<laughs> Daisy has kept hers already and she's not returning. <laughs> so I think for today our donors will forgive us. Yes, because my day has been successful. So I will defend that. So today our donors will forgive us and I know I'm live so they will follow. Because it's due to public demand, I will allow you to go with the clappers. I will also allow you to carry your placard and show it outside there. Because women must lead. Thank you so much.